were swept in the crowd. And those, but there were 75 billion of us who did not make a firm stand to God. Or to say, let's see a demonstration. So God knew that some of us in their heart knew that only God can be a God. Because Satan confession that he can be a God was not only blasphemous, it was also wrong. It was not possible for anyone else to function as a God in charge of a dominion and run it perfectly without disease, without accidents, without problems. Nobody can do that. It was the wrong Uh, being swept in the crowd, uh, I'm going to tell you about an experiment that some people did. In this experiment, uh, I think a very simple experiment. There's an arrow like this with, with uh, two heads. Sorry, you can't see it, but you can put the point up there. And so let's take two arrows. One of them has only one pointer, and the other has uh, two pointers like that. Now obviously this one looks like this, but this one does not. So the experiment was to tell a group of people that uh, let us agree that this arrow looks like this one. And then one, one, one member of the group was absent and, and they said let us, when he comes in, let's all say that this one looks like this one. And then ask him which one of these two looks like this one. See what happened. So when this fellow came in, they started to ask the question, which one of the two arrows looks like this one? And the group, one by one, said, this one looks like this one. This one here looks like this one. Until, until they reached the fellow, the projected victim, and they told him, they asked him, which one of these two looks like this one? And he said, this one looks like this one. He went along with the, with the crowd. Now, you and I are sure that he knew that this one looks like this one. In his heart, he knew that this one looks like this one. But he probably said, hmm, maybe they know something I don't know. Maybe there's a trick here or something. So he went along with the crowd. He said, this one looks like this one. This is a real life experiment. <coughs> and this is precisely what happened in that uh, great feud. So the angels suggested that all the creatures who did not uphold God's absolute authority must be thrown out and banished from God's kingdom. But because of God's knowledge that this fellow in his heart knew which the correct answer, but he went along and was swept in the crowd, some of us human beings were also swept in the crowd and we, we said, uh, yeah, maybe Satan can do it. Let us see a demonstration. So God wanted to give us a chance. God is the Rahman al Rahim. He is the most merciful. And He did not throw us out of His kingdom because of this crime that we committed, which is in fact the original sin. He wants to give us another chance to redeem ourselves, to denounce uh, our crime, and to uh, proclaim God's absolute authority and uphold it. But only God can be a God. Okay, this uh, calls for, uh, for this second chance, a test was to be done in order for us to go through the same process. In other words, if you, if you kept asking this person and say, are you sure that this one looks like this one? He would say, uh, yeah, I'm sure. They will say, come on, think about it. This one has two pointers, this is only one, and this is two pointers. He, he will tell you, if you press him, he will say, well, I know that this one looks like this one, but everybody is saying this one is like this one. So I thought maybe, maybe I, they know something I don't know. So this is the second chance. For the second chance, we learn from Surah 67 that God created death. There was no death. God created that all the creatures who did not uphold God's absolute authority, who are to give him a second chance, including the jinns and the humans, 
were, were put to death and they were to be brought into this this universe which is the smallest and innermost of seven universes to be born into this world having no recollection whatsoever of the great view or anything that happened in the first life the Quran calls it the first life this is the second life no excuse me this is the first life after that death mm -hmm. but we are born into this world without any uh, recollection of what happened in the, in the great society and then we are given a message from God telling us we shall uphold God's absolute authority we must worship only God and you must know that God is the only one who possesses all power and we are also given a message from Satan Satan tells us God alone is not enough there are also other entities that can have power like Muhammad or Jesus or Mary or St. Francis or Imam Hussein and it, this is what Satan will be pushing and they will make a free will decision to uphold God, God's absolute authority or repeat the crime that we committed in the past and we say there can be other entities besides God who have power also. in other words we are given another chance to go back to God's kingdom or to join Satan's kingdom this is why we are here this is one of the main reasons for being here. Now that, this was the uh, first half of the, of the answer that I, I talked about yesterday. And I want now to talk about the second half. Second half is that tragically this being swept in the crowd is happening to, to many of us. Because the world is mostly oblivious to God. People, those people driving out in the streets are just going about their business totally oblivious to God. And they don't do anything to, uh, to develop their soul, nourish the, the, the real person. They feed their bodies breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But they totally neglect the real person. They're feeding the garment, the outer garment, this is the outer garment, and they leave the real person. And some of us are being swept in the crowd. We're, we're, we're doing the same thing as they are. And if we decide to believe in God, even believe in God alone, that He alone is worthy of worship, we don't do enough to develop our soul. Because everybody else is not doing anything. So if one of us is doing only the morning prayer, uh, some of us make uh, funny statements like, Oh, God should be happy and doing the morning prayer. Look at all those people doing nothing. But I'm doing the morning prayer every morning. But this is, uh, it is not enough. It is again being, it's repeating the mistake. The original mistake. Being swept in the crowd. But the Quran teaches us in order to be saved, to be redeemed, and to go back to God's kingdom, we have to set uh, minimum for our uh, salvation a minimum amount of I'm getting to call it gift now that we must give ourselves we, we, we grow up thinking it is obligations like the five daily prayers we, 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 we've grown accustomed to call them duties and they, they change into something like chores so somehow Satan succeeded in, in, uh, in convincing us that these are chores or duties that we must do for God in order to be saved. This is all wrong. They are not chores, they are not duties or obligations. The Quran teaches that they are gifts from God. And when you do the five daily prayers, God has given you a gift because you deserve it and because He knew that in your heart, you knew that this one looks like this one. <laughs> Deep in your heart. Even though you said with your mouth that uh, yes, Satan can do it, maybe. So he gives you this gift. And we see it in the Quran when uh, the Prophet Abraham, Abraham uh, prays. He says, Rabbi Jalni Muqim al Salah. This is what he prays for. When we pray now, we pray for health or wealth or peace, God make my kids, my kids, my kids. 
But he, he prayed and he said, please God, make me one who observes the contact prayers. But it's a gift from God. Because they are the means for the real person. Five means a day. All of us were very careful to make sure that I'm going to have lunch today. But which is not really the case. It's not, I'm not going to have lunch today. I'm going to give my body lunch today. But if you realize that the five daily prayers, for example, are a gift from God, who will, who will be glad, who will be eager to to feed our souls, just like we are eager to feed our bodies. So let me go through this uh, minimum exercise. <coughs> This would be the minimum for any believer in order to avoid being swept in the crowd. It's the five contact prayers. The second item I put here is a cat. It will not be surprising that 99% of us right here in this room do not look at the cat. And uh, just to scare you a little bit, the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He's going to restrict His mercy to those who give the cat. The verse says, Wa rahmati wa My mercy encompasses all things. The truth of God says, Wa rahmati wa My mercy encompasses all things. But I will restrict it for those who are righteous who give these zakat. That's how important this item is, number two. Zakat, the, the charity. And this is repeated in the Quran so many times. We ask the people in hell, why are you here? They say, we didn't feed the poor. One of the answers. In fact, it is, we didn't observe the contact prayer and we didn't feed the poor. مَثَلَ لَكَكُمْ فِي الصَّحَةِ قَالُوا لَبْنَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We did not do the five prayers وَلَبْنَكُمْ مُطَعْمُ الْمِسْكِينَ We didn't feed the food. So these are the two most important things. These have to be minima for you. The five, you must make a determination that you must feed your soul. The five basic meals. Why not on this topic of the five basic meals? The Quran, if you see my new translation, the theme of the new translation is right here. This is, uh, this is in the text. It will not be this big, so don't worry. <laughs> because this is only one side. So, uh, as soon as you open the front cover, you're going to see this theme here, which says, surely those who believe, those who are Jewish, the Christians, the converts, Anyone who, number one, believes in God, and number two, believes in the hereafter, and number three, leads a righteous life, will receive the recompense from the Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. So the Jews, the Christians, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Muslims, anyone who believes in God, this means God alone, and believes in the hereafter, and leads a righteous life, they have nothing to fear. Now, we read other verses in the Quran, so how does this fit with the five contact prayers? Because the Jews and the Christians don't do the five contact prayers. For the Buddhists, for the Hindus. But if they satisfy these three requirements, they would be saved. But how does this fit with this? Other verses in the Quran tell us that anything righteous they do, they are rewarded for it. But it will be like living on snacks. It will be a slow process. It would be like going from here to there without a map. Going from San Francisco to Dallas, Texas without a map. The five contact prayers are the fastest way of developing your soul, our soul. And we do learn this from the Quran. That these types of people will make it, but they will not make it to the degree or the rank or the extent that you can make it using the five basic prayers. Exactly like living on snacks. For the body. You give your body the potato chips and the sunflower seeds all day. A piece of candy here and there. But no basic meal. No main meal. This will stop your growth. You will not be healthy. But you still you survive. 
for a long time you <laughs> so the five contact players here, the five basic meals for the soul. There's a cat. We thank God for teaching us how to do it right. Because uh, everywhere in the Muslim world we do it wrong. The majority uh, of Muslims in the world, they give this a cat if they do once a year. Two and a half percent of their savings a one year old above the system. This is this but this is what the Quran says, this is what God says. Surah 6, verse 131. <coughs> God says, Don't give the zakat on the day of harvest. And we don't harvest wheat or peaches, what we harvest is checks. This is what we harvest. Our salary or our income from trading or from an uh, investment or a sale. But uh, the principle is that any time you receive money, it's going to go into your pocket, that's your money, your money, you must give, set aside at least two and a half percent of that and give it away to a specific set of recipients in the Quran. And they are in this order, your parents should. If they are rich, then you go to your relatives, your cousins, your sisters, brothers, nephews, nieces, and uncles. This is the second category, number three. Uh, we don't have to remember the orphans. We have to find some orphans. We have no support from a parent or both the Well, Mr. King of this service, the poor, any poor people after that. The next category is the traveling alien. Somebody just came from Mexico and they don't have a job. They're working on the immigration paper. They don't have, they cannot work, they don't have a work permit. This is the next category. But the zakat must be given on, on your net income, two and a half percent, immediately. If you, when you read the Quran, you see that zakat and salat, salat, namaz, and zakat are together, always, as if they are a daily process. In fact, at the very, in the first, first phase of the Quran, in Surah al Baqarah, Surah number two, not the first phase, but the second phase. The definition of the righteous. They observe the contact prayers and spend from our provisions to them, which is these two. Right at the beginning of the Quran, these two points are mentioned. These are uh, the, the minimum, number one and two of the minimum. Set. By the way, in the cat as it is practiced in the Muslim world, it not, doesn't make sense. Because uh, if you have a, a theoretical uh, calculation, something, let's say you have 40 million dollars uh, in the savings, you give two and a half percent of that, a million dollars. And then the following year, you have to give the cash again, and you have 39 million dollars left. The following year, you have to give another million dollars. It's not fair. According to the Quran, when you give the million dollars out of 40 million, you already purified these 40 million. They are yours, pure and clean, and you no longer have to give the cash to them. According to the so called Islamic system, you have to give until you're wrong. And if the tactical condition goes on, until you to be wrong. And that was the so two and a half percent one time, net income, when you receive at the time you receive. Number three. Fasting. Fasting is during the month of Ramadan. And this, uh, is, this goes a long way towards developing your soul. Because it's the young. The young. Rose. 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 During the month of Ramadan. Because Every day in Ramadan, you're telling your body you're not going to eat or drink until sunset. <coughs> so this, this uh, strengthens you. So God gave us a wise horse. Your body is a wise horse. It was supposed to tame it. And God gave us the means to tame it and control it. Also, it's a measure of your degree of development. <coughs> this will take me back to the prayers. <laughs> the five contact prayers. So you can measure your degree of development by, for example, the morning prayer, which is the first sunrise. 
It's very good for you physically also. You will not develop arthritis if you do wake up in the morning because that. I used to say this on theoretical basis until I heard the advertisement. Maybe you also heard this from the uh, arthritis foundation. They do not lay in, a, in the same position, sit in the same position for a long time. The, some truck driver was asked, you know, what do I do? I have arthritis. And they said, every few hours you must get out and sleep. Now when we go to sleep and, you know, sit my back, the joints become stiffer. They need to be lubricated. So God does not want to bother us and uh, annoy us by asking us to get up before sunrise every day. He doesn't need us to do that. We need it. So if we uh, do the morning prayer, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get through the subject a little bit, but this is the physical part of it. That you get up and you lubricate your joints and you will not have arthritis when you grow up. You grow older. The spiritual part of it is you can measure the degree of your development because as you become strong, you, not the body, you become strong, your body will become obedient to you. Mm -hmm. So you can measure if, if you wake up, if you cannot wake up at all in the morning, you're in bad shape. If you cannot tell your body to get up for your own good, for the morning meal, the morning prayer, before sunrise. Because there is a fight between you and your body every morning. If you, if, you, if you decide to do this, there comes tomorrow morning before sunrise and the body wants to sleep. <laughs> but you need, you need to, to make it wake up. So this struggle takes place and one of you wins, either you or your body. If your body wins, you continue to sleep. And you will continue to be weak. If you win, you will grow and you will develop and the growth of the soul is very fast. Sura 17. This is the growth of the sea will grow until about five feet or six feet tall. But the soul grow until it is bigger than San Francisco. The soul, your soul. So the degree of growth is uh, the game is fantastic. So it's not like you know, we eat this food to grow and, and uh, it will be very limited to grow the body is the soul grows immensely. So if you succeed in, in forcing your body to get up before sunrise and do the morning, make contact with your creator before sunrise, you grow a lot. So at first it could be difficult. But in a month or two, you will grow sufficiently that when you say to your body, get up and do the morning contact prayer, it will get up grudgingly. And this will show you another, the degree of your growth. You will be on your way. <laughs> it will be very good, you know, even though your body is getting up grudgingly to do that contact prayer, it's very good. Better than saying no and losing to your body. But gradually, as you grow stronger, your body will become absolutely obedient to you. This will tell you how much growth you attain. You come to time before sunrise, you set the alarm. In fact, you will not need to set the alarm anymore. Is true. You will not need. You, 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 you will wake up your body at the right time before sunrise. You get up with the contact prayer, and your body obediently will, will start to enjoy. It. And this will tell you at what the, at the degree where you where you stand. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you will really enjoy. You enjoy the morning prayer. It will be very cheerful. Most people get up in the morning and have a long prayer. But you will get up with a big smile every morning before sunrise. So this uh, would, would provide you with a yard stick as to the degree of your growth. Now fasting does the same thing. Because the first thing in the morning your body wants breakfast. And you, you issue a command to your body say, no, I'm not going to eat or drink. That's a good sunset. And this will cause you to grow up better. So God designed these things. The guy also, you know, you take your money that uh, most people love very much, and you give it away. So you can see that all these are designed for, for our benefit, to make our soul grow and develop. These are gifts from God. And if you are fortunate to receive the gifts, you will do these things. 
It seems like the, what it takes is a, is a decision. So if you decide that you want to worship God alone, then God will give you this gift and you'll be able to do it. So your part is really very easy. All you need to do is a decision. I want to be redeemed, I want to be with God alone. I believe that Muhammad, Jesus, Mary, Hussein, Ali, none of them have any power. Only God has all power. So what you, this is all you need is a decision. And God, you see that you do this thing automatically. <coughs> the, the fourth uh, minimum, we call it zikr. <laughs> and that's what is zikr. But I have to explain it. The Quran, uh, there's a commandment in the Quran that's very important that says, Ya Yuhi Ladina Amanu, or you who believe, for Guru Allah, Zikran Kathir. Remember God continuously, Allah, frequently. And uh, this is not uh, any ritual or anything that you perform, it's something that you do continuously. You look at the this view and say, SubhanAllah, God be glorified. We realize God's creation, the beauty that God created in the world. You look at the fruit, look how many flavors we have here. When I say the word orange, you think of a certain flavor. Then I say strawberry, and you think of a certain flavor. Strawberry is have a, a color, texture, taste, flavor, smell. And these are all chemicals that God created in the strawberry. Your speech, you know, say that word, you think of, of uh, So when you look at this, it's, SubhanAllah. And God didn't have to do all this. But this is this. When you say SubhanAllah, when you think of God, God's creation, and God's greatness, this is what you do, Zik. But let me start in the beginning. The minimum that you want to set for yourself is Start when you wake up in the morning. The first thing you must say in the morning must be the name of God. The first thing you say. In this country, most people start with a dirty word in the morning, every morning, mm-hmm. when the alarm goes off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start with the name of God. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah. There is no God except the one God. It's going to take you three or four months if you don't, if you're not doing it already. It's going to take you three or, four, three or four months at least to get used to do it. The first thing you do when you open up your eyes, this is big. <laughs> because what you utter, the first thing you say in the morning, every morning, this is what you will utter when you get up with the day of resurrection. The, the real life, the eternal life, that will determine your rank forever. And you don't utter a dirty word. <laughs> And the name of the next. <laughs> so that is the first thing we do, and of course we do the morning prayer. There are certain commandments in the Quran, that the straightforward commandments that you must do to, to carry out this, this uh, gift. For example, in Surah 18, God says, Do not say I will do anything without saying, Insha'Allah. God will. Does that a Quran that is saying, do not say about anything? In the fact of that, it's a God and do this tomorrow, it's a Yashallah. Without saying, Inshallah. You must never say, I'm going to see you tomorrow. And that's it. You must say, I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. <coughs> Even the only word of the American or non Muslim. At first, you'll be shy. You're afraid to say, What is this? And they will say that. They'll be taken aback when they say God willing, but eventually they will respect you and they will get used to it and you will be carrying out your duty. You're actually reminding the people of their creator. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to finish this at 6 o'clock, God willing. And, then, and this must become a habit. Again, it will take you three or four months. But this is the commandment in the Quran. Do not say, I will do anything without saying, Inshallah. The Quran gives you a commandment also. That if you want to invoke protection for your children, for example, or your car, or your property, you must say, Masha Allah. This is Surah 18 also. This, this man who lost his garden. God says, if only when you enter your garden, you said, Masha Allah, the complete statement is, Masha Allah, 
you would not have lost your virgin. So this tells us that in order to invoke protection for your own children, your own property, your own car, you say, MashaAllah, you start your car and touch like that, very nicely. Say, MashaAllah. Now before you start, say, Bismillah, take quick. <laughs> this is what Zikr is. You must seek every chance to mention God. This is because we, we came to the realization, and this is very important, that your God, who's your God? Let me stop and answer your question. Don't answer me. It's in your mind. In your mind. In your mind, answer me. Who is your God? So every one of you is saying, my God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And most of you are wrong. We were shocked when you came to this realization. When you came to this realization and I was taken to a Friday sermon. We were all shocked because we examined ourselves as to who is our God. Mm-hmm. But it turns out when you study the Quran carefully that your God is whoever or whatever occupies your mind most of the day. Mm-hmm. And we examined ourselves and we found that uh, the creator of the heavens and the earth was not our God. We thought we were believers and we thought our God was the creator of the heavens and the earth. And this was the thing that, and this is the answer that the Quran gives describing many people who are headed, going, going to hell. <coughs> At the end of Surah 23, for example, if you ask them, who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and the Lord of the great dominion? Or why are you, where did you go wrong? So here they are saying, God, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. But you see, they are saying with their mouth, and the, this is the answer to their mind, but they are preoccupied with other things. Therefore, this is why the commandment to remember God constantly is very important. At least 51% of the day. And it's very easy. I know you're thinking it's very difficult. How can I do it? I'm at work and busy with the computer and so on. Now we think of God. But it's really very easy. Because when you're doing the computer, you look and you see somebody put a flower in his desk or something. You see flowers in his desk. You look at the design of the Quran, subhanAllah, that's a glory power. <coughs> this will satisfy a good requirement. Will interrupt you, your, uh, your thinking and concentration of the, the world. And you, you, you think of God. By the way, I go back to the contact prayers. The five contact prayers go a long <coughs> way towards this, remembering God. As a matter of fact, if you look up Surah 20, <coughs> verse 14, God says, Observe the contact prayers to remember me. This is the reason for giving you this gift. <coughs> to cause you to remember God because it is not just the two minutes you know we went back then we went the afternoon prayer two minutes it is not just those two minutes that are, are counted in your table as credit for you two hours ago we looked at the water and we said oh uh, it's not afternoon prayer again the last you remember God there and this goes to your credit and uh, an hour later we said uh, oh is it time for the afternoon prayer uh, no it is not so you're thinking of God, what is afternoon prayer? You're doing it, uh, you're not doing it to get uh, a salary, so to be paid, you're doing it for God. I'm just thinking about it. So the five prayers, when you go to sleep, you say, I hope I get up before sunrise tomorrow to pray the morning prayer. So that, that is it. The five prayers every day, that's why the most important minimum gift to your soul is the five prayers. They go a long way towards making the creator of the heavens and the earth, your God, and not your job, or your spouse, or your children, or your property. These are the gods that are counted in the Quran. The gods that are counted in the Quran include spouses, a man who worships his wife instead of God, or a wife who worships her husband instead of God. Children, <coughs> giving uh, more attention to our children than to God. These are also counted as God, to a children. Surah 7 is the verse, you probably remember it, that says, 
that uh, the wife becomes pregnant and, uh, and the Lord becomes heavier and heavier and then they pray to God, please God give us a good baby. And then, as soon as they give them a good baby, they turn the baby into a God. Like, uh, <laughs> so that they are very clear. And the Torah is here, the person who lost his garden, his garden was his job, his property, his business, his job. The ego is another God, as soon as when you fight. The ego can stop you from being saved. The ego. And that's so, in all those, the, the, the five prayers and this text will help you as to who your God is. The, the, the creator of heaven will have to be your God. Through this text, the very important command, Ya ayyuhu al-ladina amalu al-kuru Allah dhikra al-kathira. Wa sabiqruhu bukratan wa asfina. Make the sleep day and night. Day and night. This is how we... This is how we get saved. And then, when I ask you, who is your God, and you might be the creator of the heavens and the earth, will you right? Only through this. Through this. As it is, when we examined ourselves some time ago, and we discovered that we plumped, that the creator of the heavens and the earth was not our God. We were preoccupied with other things. Then we set the minimum. The minimum for, for the first thing in the morning, the five prayers, you look at your child and you say, MashaAllah, God gave me this, this is God's gift to me. And this immediately invokes protection for your child. There is a mechanism for it, it's, it's very physical. Because when you say, MashaAllah, you mean that the engines will guard your child. And your child can go ride the bicycle and go between the traffic and I can maybe this. A <laughs> 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 bit too bad. <laughs> but uh, yes, you try to be protected even on I say anywhere. So there is a mechanism for it when you say MashaAllah. So inshaAllah is a commandment. When you say I'm going to do anything in the future, you must say inshaAllah. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. Anytime. Alhamdulillah. Oh, there is a commandment that says do not eat from anything upon which the name of God was not pronounced. And although I tend to think this applies to meat, I think it applies to eggs and pieces and oranges. So, before you eat, say Bismillah. Make it, and before you start anything, before you start your car, say Bismillah. This, these are all just chances that you must grab to, to make God our God. And not our job, or our business, or our children, and so on. But this will give you everything else. This will guarantee you your job, the guarantee you, your children, the guarantee your spouse, and so on. So this, is, uh, I, I would say this is, this is the thing maybe number one. <laughs> <laughs> the contact players go a long way from that. Now the idea behind all this is we don't want to repeat the mistake that we did in the past. We were billions of years ago. We don't want to be swept in the crowd. It doesn't matter if the people around you do not do the five prayers. You do them. And don't be, don't let Shaitan tell you, oh God should be happy with the one prayer, and doing the one prayer, so that should be enough. I'm better than all these people. Yes you are, but it's not enough. You're not giving yourself the, the proper being. So I think I will uh, stop at this and let the questions uh, for the discussion to better remind me if I forgot anything. So this is the basic idea as to why we are here. We thank God that He let us know first why we are here. He gave us a very sharp, clear picture to our generation. We would know this 20 years ago. We were born 20 years ago. We would, we would know this. God let us know that we were doing everything wrong. Everything we were doing, everything we grew up doing was wrong. And the math was wrong. The zakat was wrong. The fasting was wrong. The hajj was wrong. We neglected the zikr. And God, out of His mercy and grace, He taught us the correct way to do it. So, we have to, right, right now, we should turn to God mentally and thank Him for showing us the right way, and at the same time make a pledge that we will rejoin God's kingdom by doing all these things and sitting in the midst of ourselves.
He doesn't need that, does he? No, he doesn't need it. You need it. Oh, it's all for us. Nothing, none of this is for us. Is this why God created the earth in, in this way? What way? Our universe has a billion galaxies. One billion galaxies. But let me start from here. <laughs> okay, the solar system. The solar system is very small compared to the rest of our universe. And it is uh, two billion miles across. Two billion miles across. Right here. No, miles. The solar system. The solar system. The, the light comes up from the sun in eight minutes, 93 million miles away. The sun is 93 million miles away. That's the long distance. So the light takes the light eight minutes to come here from the sun. The solar system itself is two million miles across. The solar system is a very small component of the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years across. I'm not talking about light anymore. 100,000, we travel at the speed of light. Imagine, the sun, 93 million miles, the light comes in 8 minutes. We cross the Milky Way galaxy in 100,000 light years at the speed of light, 100,000 years. There are 1 million of these galaxies. 1 billion, excuse me. Yes, whenever they say a sign, they see a sign of light. They turn away saying, this is real magic. They disbelieve <coughs> and follow their own opinion and what they could physically think. They have received enough knowledge to set them straight. Great wisdom has come to them, but the warnings seem to be useless. Therefore, leave them alone. The day will come when the caller calls them to something their eyes will be humbled. Say they come out of their grave, like the story of the Lucas. I don't want to waste your time by asking him for evidence or proof that uh, somebody paid me or somebody else millions of dollars to uh, destroy the sin of the prophet. <laughs> Are you aware that uh, God makes a lot from all the believers? The Lord is in Allah, is Allah, is Allah. Why don't you say that to me too? So why do you mention Hadith and say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yes, please pray for me too. I know. I know, I pray for all Muslims. When Muhammad called people, Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when called everywhere, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but yes, if your intention, you see, if your intention is clean, that will reward you for your intention. But if your intention is dirty, to make people turn their back away from the Sunnah of Rasulullah, that's not nice. Right. Right. Is lying son of the prophet? Is this li- uh, the prophet lying? Never. Then why do you lie? I never lie. Did I lie with you millions of dollars? I said, my feeling. I never said, I have a proof, otherwise I would show it to anybody. But in my heart, people mind. For example, there's something like that. Okay, then you are right. That's good in my mind. It's a big thing, because you are going to, for example, you don't know anything about that one. But if you change my mind, Okay. Simple. But you try no, to. Let me, let me ask the question. Are you aware? Most? Are you aware of the Quranic law that says, in the Bible, one is yes. a little bit of suspicion is simple? Mm-hmm. So you are here. And is it a son of the Prophet to commit sin? Is he suspicious? Mm-hmm. So why do you suspect that I took millions of dollars to, to Because what you're doing, you're, you're doing it so, it's a, a clear sign to me that they stop fighting the Quran. And you know they are fighting the Sunnah. So what is your proof? What is the sign that I have millions of dollars? I think another reason is that they're not being caught about the Quran. Yeah, it's a helicopter. Was Muhammad Sunnah or Shia? Muhammad was not Sunnah, was not Shia. So how come you are Sunnah? I am not Sunnah, I said. I am not Sunnah. I follow. I follow. You change even when you are not Sunnah. I am not Sunnah. I am following the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Yes, what do you want to say? I am not Shia. I am Muslim. My brother. Okay, we have the number. I am Muslim. Let us read the Sunnah and ask God to protect us from Shaitan. We are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from Shaitan and to make our worship devotion, study, and everything devoted to Allah alone in accordance with His word of Quran. Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> <laughs>
<coughs> Let us go back to our original program. If uh, there are any <coughs> questions of the thing that we said, so. Does the zakat, if you give the zakat to your family, mm -hmm. if they're non believers, does that matter? Or do no, they have to matter. matter? God does not have given it to your believing parents. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's say I'm sending my to cards. Is that, is that my zakat? Well, you have to calculate. See, zakat has to be calculated. So I receive this income, two and a half percent is this much, and then you give it to your sister who's going to college, and add more if you want first. So two and a half percent is the minimum. You can add any more. And yes, the answer is yes. You can, um, you can consider it. No, it's not automatic zakat. You have to have the intention. You have to be aware that you are uh, taking a proportion of your income to give your sister as the cat. You know, you cannot inadvertently pray the known prayer, for example. You have to make the intention and do the known prayer. And the cat is exactly the same thing. Uh, the prayer is a specific thing to do, and you must have that intention to do it. So, uh, as long as you specifically make the intention that you are giving the zakat to your sister, then uh, the requirement is satisfied. Same? Well, no, no, but simply the duty to, to raise it. That's, yes, that's different. You are an independent person, they will fall under the Ahrabi, the religion. There is a uh, verse in the Quran that it says that all the fruits um, are male or female. Where is that? I don't know. I couldn't find it. There's a verse All the kinds of fruits. Even the atom, not the atom, there is the neutron and proton. I mean, uh, there is the uh, uh, positive and negative. Yeah, it's Electron and names, 
This is a sign that he's doing the right. The moment, the moment any other name comes up, the sign is in the picture. Yes, I mean when I'm praying, um, sometimes I'm praying, but I'm thinking about some other things, like I have lots of problems, I'm no, no, thinking no. about job, or I'm thinking about, you know, um, everything. Does that mean Shaitan has own thoughts on me? Sometimes I thought, well, uh, try to, to, to mess with water. So this is why God uh, asked us to seek refuge from the West. Because he whispers in our ears and reminds of everything in the world when we get up to pray. Mm-hmm. But don't let this bother you. What, uh, what should uh, be done in your prayer is that you make sure that from the beginning of the prayer to the end of the prayer there is no other name except the name of God. Because the minute you mention any other name, you have committed shirk. Shirk is me, means more than one. And you have to survive God and you have to survive the Prophet. When you mention any other name in the Salah. This is based on after the Salat al Zikri, which is singular, observe the Salat to commemorate me, singular. Even though God speaks in the plural sense, in many places in the Quran. And the other is, when the message is Allah, that the place of the worship belongs to God, do not call from anyone else besides God. So, if anything causes you to mention any other name of God, this will be Satan worthy. How we can determine if Shaitan has influence on God? Well, that's what I said, by deviating from God alone. But no, I mean, talking about, for example, I'm doing, I'm drinking, I'm doing something, I'm a smoke, you know, I do lots of things wrong. I know it is wrong, but it's yeah. my choice, and you said they have a choice that yeah. they can, you know, do it. Yeah. But how do I know it's my choice or is it Shaitan or whether or is it God or... But if you're unhappy for any reason, there is a psychology. I'm not happy, I'm enjoying it. For example, I'm drinking, I'm enjoying it. When you're asking me, I'm, I'm, I'm asking no, I'm you. No, I'm asking you a question. Yeah, the answer is anything that will cause you to put any other name besides God will be from Satan. If you are working, uh, living, doing things, and uh, you're satisfied with God alone, then you will be from God. Thank you. Is there any criteria for the new message in the Yes, we are confused. Yeah. Okay, first of all, in uh, Surah 3, verse 81, we learn that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a covenant with all the prophets, including the Prophet Muhammad, that after they deliver the messages, a messenger will come to confirm, consolidate, purify, and unify all the messages. And uh, so this is a clear and straightforward uh, prophecy in the Quran. Uh, the traditionalists and the idol worshippers to raise Muhammad against his will. They claim that Muhammad uh, was the messenger who will come after all the prophets. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almost clarifies this in the Quran. When we go to Surah 33, verse 7, we learn that Muhammad was one of the prophets who made that uh, covenant. So, uh, also the Quran says that Muhammad is not the last messenger. Muhammad was the last prophet because he brought the last scripture. Back to verse 81 of Surah 3, the prophet or Nabi is defined as one who is given a book. With Abdullah Mithaq al Nabiyyi, Lama Ataykukum min Kitabi The book or scripture is given to the prophet. Thumma Ja'akum Rasulun Musabdakum lima ma'am. So the messenger confirms existing scripture and does not bring a new scripture. And the Thumma means afterwards. So after all the prophets have come, including the Prophet Muhammad, as we see in 33 7, a messenger is supposed to come and consolidate all the messages and confirm them and purify them into one. Uh, besides this, we go to the statement in Surah 33, verse 40, which says that Muhammad was not the last messenger, but the last prophet because he wrote the last scripture. Ma'kana Muhammad ada ahadim abijalikum. Muhammad was not the father of any of your men. Walakin Rasulullah, a messenger of God, wa khatam al and the final prophet. If, as some people claim, every Nabi was a messenger, or every Nabi was a messenger, but also a messenger of the prophet, if the Nabi includes the Mursali, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not say Rasulullah. So, Makana Muhammad and Al Ahd and Jalikum, Muhammad is not the father of any of those men, Walakin khatam al the last prophet. And this will cover the prophets and the messengers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran is very accurate. Said Rasulullah, a messenger of God, the Khatam al So we learn from that that Muhammad is not the last messenger. 
There are many other verses in the Quran that have this indication also in Surah 7 where it says, Ya Bani Adam, or children of Adam, Imma ya'tiyatakum rusulun minkum, when messengers come from among you, yatluna alaykum ayatina, reciting our revelation, faman amana wa antah fa'alakum muhtakum. Obviously, God is not talking to the dead, He's talking to the people in the future after the Quran. Because when messengers come to you, you shall believe and uh, listen. So, we, we have this Quranic principle that Muhammad was the last prophet but not the last messenger. And the verses that come after this, verses 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91, all these verses say that anyone who rejects this Quranic uh, prophecy is not a Muslim anymore, is dismissed from God's grace. And this is what I have in the new issue of the Muslim perspective, which I will give somewhat very bad. You can look at it. So anyone who, of course, because they do not believe the Quran, anyone who rejects the premise that Muhammad was not the last messenger, is no longer a believer, he does not believe God, does not believe the Quran, does not believe the words of Sayyidina Muhammad. So therefore, as believers in the Quran, we must know that uh, Muhammad was not the last messenger, he was the last prophet, because he was the last prophet. So if Muhammad was not the last messenger, and as we see in Surah 3 verse 81, if a messenger is to come after him, what does he look like? We have to ask ourselves, what does the messenger look like? Hmm? Human being. What are his qualifications? What will he advocate? Quran. How can we distinguish the true messenger from the fake messenger? How do we know if this person is alive or telling the truth? So all these questions must be examined by all of us. As, as soon as we pass these uh, obstacles, I have here, uh, if you remind me, I'll give you a sheet that is a step-by-step -step proof for all these things. And it begins by the Quranic principle that Muhammad is not the last message. What are the criteria of the true message? How do you tell if the messenger who comes after Muhammad is a true one or a fake one? We heard of many messengers, people clear claiming to be messengers. Joseph Smith, Baha'u'llah, Ghulam Ahmed. We heard all these people claiming to be messengers. How can you tell if the messenger is true or fake? Or the criteria? Right, the criteria is first of all, he must advocate the worship of God alone. Because this is the first commandment in all the scriptures, in all the messages. And uh, God goes in the Quran goes through the messengers, one by one, all of them, and, uh, and it says the same statement after all of all of them, uh, after each one. Ya Allah ma lakum min ilah in my All my people worship God, we have no other God besides me. Ya Allah ma lakum min ilah in my The same expression for every one of the messages. Therefore, this is the first criteria. The true messenger must advocate the worship of God alone. He must advocate the destruction of all idols and all idol worship. He must advocate the upholding of the words of God alone, not the words of men, no matter who those men are. This is your first criteria. Somebody comes to you and says, I'm a messenger of God. This is the first judgment that you must, uh, or the first criteria that you must satisfy. That this person must be advocating the words of God alone. The second criteria is what was the second one? This is number three. Hmm? The proof. Excuse me. He must be supported by a God-given proof. God says in the Quran, you demand proof. Have to Quran proof. Who have to Quran proof? So a person comes to you and says, I'm God's messenger. You say, what is your proof? The third one is, he doesn't ask for words for himself. He doesn't ask you for money. Because if money enters the picture, it's a whole new issue. So these are the three criteria. Advocating the worship of God alone. Proof from God that he is God's messenger. Moses came and he threw the staff, became a, a serpent. That was a uh, proof from God. He had nine signs, nine miracles. Uh, Jesus revived the dead and healed the blind and the lepers. That was the proof, miracle from God. The Prophet Muhammad's miracle was the Quran. So everyone who comes and claims to be a messenger must have proof. And third, he must not ask you for money. 
the, the methods of flux A of this three criteria is not a method, it is a logic. Also, I must emphasize here that the message is the important thing, not the messenger. As the first generation and the unified message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the purified Quran, we must destroy all human idols. This is the first principle. We must be devoted to God alone. Because the idols themselves do not, be, do not want to be idolized. Jesus does not want to be idolized. And as we know from the Quran and from the Bible, he will disown the people who idolize him. In, the, in Matthew 7:23, 21 to 23, we read that Jesus will say, Many will come to me on the day of judgment and tell me, Lord, Lord, did we all oh, before that it says uh, none of those who call me Lord will make it to heaven. Many of you will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not performed miracles in your name? Then I will say, then I will say to them, out of my sight, I don't know you. Jesus will disown them. And this is also in the Quran. Muhammad will disown the people who idolize him. And we see this in Surah 46. We go to read it for you. And they are completely unaware of their calling. When the day of judgment comes, the day of summer, they will become their enemies. The Prophet Muhammad right now is dead, as the Quran says, he is absolutely unaware of the people who are calling on him, which fits this description. And on the day of judgment, he will be an enemy of people who are calling on him. And this is what Shaitan misleads us and uh, tricks the other people in the name of love. So if you love Muhammad, you have to commemorate him every day. Muhammad is unaware. And uh, as we see in these verses, they are the fathers, the fathers astray. I'm going to read it again. Muhammad Adamdu, who is father astray. Mimman yadru, than those who call upon min dunillah, other than God. Man la yastajib, those who cannot respond. له إلى يوم القيامة في الذي يوم الرسول وهم في الصعيد عند عائلهم غافلون قال أنا وين؟ يقول لي إذ محمد أوير وذا كيف هو سؤالي من هنا؟ محمد أوير but all the shaheeds in the Quran, the shaheeds not Muhammad, even less human beings, alright? Listen it now. Shaheed is any Muslim yes. who died in God's cause. Yes. What the Quran say about the shaheed? وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتْلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءً عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ if the Shaheed is Muhammad dead, Muhammad is dead, then God is the Lord. If all the Shaheed in the Quran tells them, the minute the Shaheed die, his body is dead. You can put him in the grave and you can even you know, cut him in pieces. The Shaheed in front of you. I mean, you take the Shaheed, put him in the casket, and put him in the grave. 
But Allah said in the Quran that this hit in front of you is not this. So who do we believe? Our eyes or the Quran? We believe the Quran. We believe the Quran. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't believe that those people who died in that cause is dead. They are still alive with God. And with God. And even so I give them food. That means that a human being can be alive with God, even his body is in front of you. Are they aware of what's happening here? And, just one second, and it, God is still giving them food, and the Rabbim, we don't know where. And the Rabbim, Rabbim is everywhere. God is everywhere. So the Shaheed is with God. Okay. Where? That's that's everywhere. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is dead in his body. But he is one of the Shaheed. He is Nabi. He is Rasul. He is, is the high quality even more than the Shaheed. So if the Shaheed with this quality is still alive, Muhammad is still alive. Okay. Is he aware of your calling on him? Is he aware of your calling on him? Yes. I am asking a question. You are calling uh, from no, I am, I am asking yes or no. I am asking a question. Is he, yes or no. Is he aware of your calling on him? Muhammad yes or, no. yes or no. Is Muhammad aware of your calling on him or unaware? I pray to God, God gave him the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you pray to your father, your father is dead. Your father cannot hear you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take your prayer from your mouth, give it to your father. <laughs> Tell him to your father, I have a beautiful gift from your, your child. So that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you don't have the hadith of Rasulullah, you are missing a lot. You are saying that the Quran is not complete, so that's why... No, I am saying the Quran is complete. So you don't need it to be complete. No, no, no. Not only that, it's the Quran of Fattah. The Quran of If you read the Quran, I don't remember the ayah. It says that you got to pray for your death. You know what I mean? This is the text of the Quran. I, I have the dictionary, but I don't have it with me, but they can give it to me. Okay, let me tell you something. The dictionary of Quran. Can we pray, can we pray for our father to die or not? We're talking about uh, awareness. Can we pray? It doesn't help him. Yeah, if God wants, it will help him. If God wants. So, if God wants, it will help. Yeah, if God wants. It really doesn't okay. make any difference, because whatever we do, when we are alive, that's so if that, I can that, pray to God, God and when we die, yes, nobody else can pray. So when I pray to God, when I pray to God, God take my prayer to my father. When I pray to Muhammad, God take my prayer to Muhammad. What's the point to take a prayer to our father? What's the point to take a prayer to our father? So Muhammad, he is saying that Muhammad is aware of his calling on him. God give him the message. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> God gave the message to everybody. There are about 400 people. The, the, the ayah said, is that the, is that is that the, uh, the ayah said what it means if you ask for Allah. Allah is very close to you. Inni qareebun ujibu da'wat al-da'i iza da'ani. If you ask me, I am very close to you. You say Muhammad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Seek God alone. No. Da'a means pray for everything. You can pray for a million dollars. You can pray for health. You can pray for somebody to be saved. You can pray for your dead father to be saved and go to paradise. Anything you pray to Allah is very close to you. I mean, if I, I can say, pray I for myself God. to be saved, not for yourself, that's enough. for your family too. And then you say the some person who can do all 
for example, my father, yeah. he can do robbery, all the bad things. And then when he dies, I pray to God, please yeah. don't take him to the hell. Yeah. It's up to us to, to accept it from you or not. No, it's everybody is so individual. This is very <laughs> obvious. Okay, I will tell you just one, one five seconds, five, five seconds yes, story. Father, one of the imams, one of the imams saw a man him. stealing an apple, giving it to the poor guy. He steal an apple from the, 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 the man, okay, giving it to the to poor, poor guy. Yes. So he went to him. No, 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 it's, it's a true, uh, true story. I am giving you one of the men I know him. I know the man, by the way. He saw the guy taking an apple, taking it from, stealing it from here, giving it to the poor guy. He went to him and he said, what did you do? He said to him, according to the Quran, I made hasana. So God will multiply my hasana. Hasana means good deed. God will multiply my hasana, which I give to the poor guy. And I made the yeah, bad deed, so God will excuse me for one bad thing and will give me ten good things. So I am winner now. I made nine out of it. Oh my God. The Imam said to him, What happened is that you stole it, so God writes for you bad deed, you give it, but didn't accept it from you. So you are the loser. How did he know he didn't accept it? Accept it? No, he gave him the example. He said, he said, how, how do you know that God is writing it for you, but for sure you are a thief? And it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fayyib, Allah is beautiful, is, is good thing, He will not accept the haram from you. What is the relation between Muhammad is praying for Allah, says, says, uh, no, 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 Muhammad other than God, you know, no. is not God, no, no. Is other than He's a human like you and I. Yes, also, Allah says in Quran, uh, chapter, uh, 13, uh, chapter 13, uh, verse 14, this is not a thing. When the dina, they do Mindunihi, in the limit of him, Mindunihi, everybody is Muhammad also Mindunihi. Well, the dina, they are only Mindunihi, la yastajibuna lahum bi shayi. That is the answer. Muhammad cannot answer because Allah said, he cannot answer. Okay. So you put this with the other verse that says, who is farther astray from those who call on uh, on people who cannot respond to them. Man, the same word, man la yastajibuna lahum la yawm al Who is farther astray? Then those who so call upon people are missing Muhammad and the idols. You know, Muhammad is the idol. You agree with Muhammad? You agree with Muhammad is Minduni? No. Is God? God? He's not God. He's Minduni. Minduni. But we don't call Muhammad. We never call to ask Muhammad give me money. I never did that. Nobody ever did that. You're calling on him. No, but I say, my Lord, I like you to take me to paradise. Before you take me to paradise, take Muhammad. This is how much I love him. We have suspicion about him. We have suspicion about him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I am the man who are. If my father did something to me, I love my father and I am proud to say it. If my father gave me his money, his soul, his life, I always go everywhere and say, I love my father. But if somebody deny his father and say, my father didn't do anything to me, because this to me, my father didn't do anything to me, I would assume this guy is arrogant and he doesn't even appreciate his own father. Because his father gave him his money, his soul, his life, his soul, 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 do you have any doubt that Muhammad is going to heaven? No. Do you have any doubt that Muhammad will be in the highest place in heaven? No. So why do you ask God to put him in the highest place in heaven? I love him. I love you. 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 I you. you. I have learned anything else about Christian.
I hope that I get to say that I can start with the media function. And I don't see any point of the that you are asking me. You don't want to start representing the state. Because he doesn't begin. Yeah. The last part of the media, I want to start with the media. Yeah. I don't see any point. Well, you oh. see, you are you are get caught in this thing. There is a fight against Islam, well, and you are in the prison. You are in, in the prison now to witness one of the worst historical tragedy that people fighting Allah in Islam, <laughs> people fighting Islam in the Muslim heart. They didn't go to the Christian. They came to the Muslim to take Muhammad, to take Jesus, to okay. take Moses, to take Abraham. He has to be a mighty God. So That's what right. you know talking about. So you came to the wrong place in the wrong time to you. To know yeah, about yeah. God. Well, she uh, was you like to know about God. God. You like to know about God. I have the time. I have the time. And I will love. I have the time. And I will love. Did you understand one thing? I think I'm not sorry about that. Yeah. And uh, what you guys are talking here, uh, if you can call you guys, but just uh, it's something you guys know very much about. Yeah, we, we don't know anything about. Know about it. So it's like we're not using any of it. That's fair. Okay, now the next thing is that you have to contact Dr. Khalifa later on and ask your questions. Just everybody else has a chance to talk and know whatever they want to know and hear. Because you're here, if you want to hear your. But if you're going to talk Francis. He lied to very bad telling her that he believed in the miracle of the Quran yes. and he believed that we do in upholding the Quran alone and worshiping God alone. And when he came here, he is pushing Satan's point of view. And he's been, I, he's I came to meet Dr. Khalifa personally to know more what is his message. And from the first thing I heard from him, I knew that he is the enemy. The enemy of God from the minute I saw his face. Okay, because we don't want to hear what is your idea. No no what is the proof of the enemy of God? Because you calling this people, when I prayed after you, and I'm sorry that I did, this man didn't even say, we love Muhammad in this prayer just for one time. <laughs> one time. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Don't do it. Next time, don't do it. But that's not enough. Let me finish. I know everything they got. If, okay, my professor is working in mathematics. Oh, yeah, he's very good man. He helped me. But the subject is mathematics. Okay? I forgot my professor. I know the mathematics. Muhammad, but I believe Muhammad. I like Muhammad. I like Jesus. I like Muhammad. But only thing Muhammad is the God. The subject is the God. Finish. I'm so glad that you he was here and show everybody what people became real Muslim and they before we pray, Maghrib, I have one thing that is very important to share with you, okay? This is the most important principle in the Quran. And it says, In Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik liman yashat. God says that everything is forgivable except shirk. Shirk means if you, if you have a business and you are the only owner, this is so called a sole proprietorship. If you have somebody else with you, this is sure. You have a sharika. And God says that the only unforgivable offense, the only one, is sure. Therefore, if you want to guarantee to go to heaven, or if you commemorate and devote yourself and the worship to God alone, you will not commit this shirk. The only unforgivable offense. An intelligent person will say, if this is the only unforgivable offense, I will run away from the slightest suspicion of shirk, of putting anything with God, no matter who that anything is, or what that anything is, because this is the only unforgivable offense. Now this fellow here is using the name of Muhammad. That is not the name of God. We are talking about God alone. He is saying, put Muhammad with God. This, is, this may not be shirk. 
maybe this is not so. Maybe it is perfectly all right. But it also may be, this is a maybe. It may be sure. Therefore, you can take a chance and uh, pray to Muhammad or to Jesus or Hussein or whatever you want and then find out in the Lord's judgment whether it is maybe right or wrong. But what is absolutely sure to be correct is devotion to God alone. Because God repeats in the Quran, repeats this verse, in Allah la yalkir al God does not forgive the putting of someone next to him, with him. So the thing that is absolutely guaranteed to be correct is La ilaha illallah and devotion to God alone. God in Surah 29, uh, Surah 29 says, God is the one who created you. God is the one who provides for you. God is the one who, Allah is the one who decides your life or death. God is the one who resurrects you. God is the one who will put you in heaven or hell. Muhammad has no role here. He did not create you. He has no role in creating you. He has no role in providing for you. He has no role in deciding your life. He has no role in resurrecting you. He has no role in putting you in heaven or hell. In Surah 54, we read that God is the one who makes you happy or miserable. God is the one who rich you, who makes you rich or poor. Muhammad has no role in this. So, an intelligent person will look at this law, which is that God forgives everything except shirk, and will, will run away as fast as he can from the slightest suspicion of shirk, because this is the only guarantee of shirk. And as you witness tonight, God sent this man, he God sent to show you how the traditional Muslims push another name with God, which is the only unforgivable thing. Uh, I'd like to ask. Uh, I'm saying that uh, we have the great honor for um, not only <coughs> Muhammad but the other messengers as well and that's by showing that we are following him, his path. I mean, the way we are doing the Salat and the Zakat and the uh, fasting and uh, all the other rules and regulations that God has asked us to do, that shows <coughs> that we are following the book which has been revealed to Muhammad by God and this is a great respect and honor uh, so that doesn't mean what you say that we hate Muhammad or we, we kind of dishonor him or disrespect him this is not true at all like the other thing that you said that we should, which was not true respecting so, Muhammad is and respecting the word that came out of, of his mouth and obeying the yeah, so so these are the first people who disobey the prophet and, the, and the God said this in Surah 25 verse 30 وَقَالَ رَسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْزُورُ that the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad is saddened and upset and embarrassed and the devil doesn't to say, my people have deserted this Quran. Not Bukhari. Because they go to Bukhari and didn't say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Inna Qawm Ittakhadu Al-Hadith Wa-Sunnah Mahdura. Or Ya Rabbi, Inna Qawm Ittakhadu Al-Bukhari Mahdura. He said, Ya Rabbi, Inna Qawm Ittakhadu Hada Al-Quran Mahdura. The miracle of the Sunnah of Rasulullah, one thing, that nobody can pray two times and fetch and four and four and three and four from the Quran alone. There is nothing in the Quran you're here. Telling God, you're telling God a liar. There is nothing, the nothing in the Quran here. Say, pray two rak'ah for the fetch, four rak'ah do, four rak'ah last, three maghrib, four lash. Nothing in the Quran say that. Okay. And where does like he have it? This is the result of ignorance of the Quran. Okay, so Tell say. me what do you have. Because أَفَغَيْرَ الله أَفْتَغِي حَكِمْ وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنْزَلَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكِتَابَ مُفَصَّلٍ God says the Quran is مفصل fully detailed What do you have? It says ما كان حديثا يفترى This is not fabricated hadith ولكن تنزيلا ولكن تنزيلا كتاب القرآن وتنزيلا كل شيء and detailing everything Now these people do not believe God when he says the Quran is مفصل تنزيلا كل شيء It's fully detailed they challenge God and say, show me what does it say the rule is for Raqqa. Okay. This is challenging God. My Lord is saying, okay God, you claim that this book is fully detailed. If you are right, God, show me what does it give the details of Salah. And this blasphemous question is not from ignorance. Because the Quran says that the Salah was in existence before the Quran. But the Salah, the Zakat, the Hajj, and all these things came through Ibrahim. Islam is not Millat Muhammad, it is not. He doesn't know that. 
the ignorance of the Quran that causes these disasters. The, 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 this religion of Islam is called throughout the Quran called Millat Ibrahim. وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُوَذًا أَوْ نَصَارَ تَهْتَدُوا قُلْ بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفٍ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلٍ بِمَنْ سَبْعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ And then uh, the Quran says that Muhammad was following Millat Ibrahim. وَثُمْ أَوْحَيْنَا لَكَ أَنِ اتَّدِعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفٍ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسْبِقِينَ So the Prophet Muhammad is a follower of Millat Ibrahim. The Quran says in many places which he is not aware of that the Salat existed before the Quran. Therefore, the things, the Surah 22 of the last verse says, وَجَهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادٍ Strive in the cause of God. Who was tobacco? He chose you. وَمَا جَعَلْ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَضٍ And did not cause any difficulty in your religion. مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ This is the religion of your father Ibrahim. Who was تَمَّاكُمْ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ قَرْضٍ This fellow here is sold by Muhammad and he does not realize that before Muhammad there was light. He does not realize, he thinks light he began with Muhammad. Muhammad. He didn't answer my question. Therefore, if you read Surah 21, verse 73, we know that the Salat and Zakat and all the duties came through Ibrahim. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ فَعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقْرَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءَ الزَّكَاةِ And we see in the Quran people who did not believe, uh, they rejected Muhammad even, and they were doing the Salat and Zakat. وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَنْ تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَسَتُهُمْ What prevented the acceptance of the worship?